Good morning. Welcome to a session on cash flow statement. I'm Dr. B. Srinivasa Kumar, Faculty School of Management, Sastra Deep University. Cash flow statement explains sources of cash and its uses in a particular period of time. So every businessman would like to know the sources from where he managed to get cash and the purposes for which it was applied. So while looking at this statement one can understand whether the cash has come into the business from the primary source of income which is sales or from the investments made or the cash was mainly because of the cash mobilized through capital and other sources and how the cash was used and to maintain the closing cash balance whether the sales has contributed to maintain closing balance or how it was managed, all these information a businessman would like to know. So cash flow statement is going to be helpful in understanding all these aspects. So it is a statement which explains the sources and the uses of of a particular time period, maybe monthly, because cash is one aspect, you know, if not properly recorded, you may have a feeling that cash was not properly used, cash misused kind of thing may be there in the minds of the businessmen, so it should be properly be recorded, and how did the cash was managed? need to be examined by the business. So this statement is going to be highly helpful for him. So profit is one aspect. Accounting profit can be generated, can be calculated, taken into account, received and the receivables, paid and the payables. All those incomes earned, though it is received or not. But that is not an indicator of the performance of a business. So the cash generating capacity of a business can be evaluated by looking at the cash flow statement. So cash flow statement reports inflow and outflow of cash. So we generally call it as cash flow. Okay, maybe cash inflow or cash outflow. And cash is equivalent. Maybe in terms of uh, you know, other uh, securities, they yeah, are more or less like uh, cash, easily convertible into cash, they are equivalent to cash. So what, what has happened to not only the cash and its equivalent can be examined or evaluated by looking at this cash flow statement. So it classifies Normally, in a cash flow statement, if you look at it, you, you, you would look at uh, you would get information regarding the cash receipts and the payments, and uh, from the major activities. Supposing it is a manufacturing company, so production is their predominant uh, business activity. So, to what extent the firm has managed to bring in receipts in the form of sales, and the purposes for which payments were made, maybe for uh, suppliers, for employees and other related expenses. So the major activities may be operating as well as investing in some of the assets, long term assets and investments and the sources of finance. So it classifies the receipts or it, in a, it classifies cash into 
cash receipts and payments on account of operating, investing and financing activities. These are considered to be the major activities of an entity or a business firm. So the statement shows net cash income, that means taking into account the receipts and the payments after making all the adjustments okay, from each activity for the overall business. So it reports from where cash has come, from where you know the firm has managed to receive cash and how it has been spent. It would have been spent for uh, materials, for labor, or for fixed assets, or for investments in securities. So, it is a statement that reports about all these uh, uh, utilization of cash, basically, the receipts and payments of cash. So, the costs for change in the uh, cash balance, comparing to the opening cash balance, how much it has uh, increased or decreased the closing balance. Uh, what has happened to closing balance can be. So, what was the reason for uh, increase or a decrease in closing balance taking into account the opening cash balance can be uh, observed, can be studied by looking at the cash flow state. So, it summarizes the uh, numerous cash transactions into few categories. In a firm, you know, day in day out cash transactions can happen. So, normally cash book is maintained wherein all cash transactions, all cash receipts and the payments are normally entered. Numerous uh, cash transactions can happen. But here when it comes to cash flow statement, it's all categorized. So cash spent towards uh, operating activities, cash paid towards income tax, cash paid towards uh, you know, purchase of uh, assets, investments, payment of dividend or interest for so all these payments will be uh, just will be entered as and when it has incurred payment was made it will be entered in the cash book of a firm but in a cash flow statement in a cash flow statement it, is, it will be categorized and it will be uh, presented in an understandable it will be reported in an understandable manner based on a certain category and it is prepared in a format. There is a format for it for cash flow statement. Uh, in case of cash book, what we do, we we'll, uh, debit all the receipts and give credit to all payments, being cash being real item, whatever form by which cash comes into the business will be entered on the debit side and on the payments may be entered. It is a simple cash book, maybe with the cash call or the bank call which may, uh, by closing the account, you know, you can get to know about the closing uh, balance of uh, cash as well as bank, taking into account the cash receipts and the payments. Whereas here, there is a straight format and as we uh, said earlier, all cash transactions will be categorized into three broad uh, or major uh, activities. And in that uh, uh, categorization, uh, it will be classified and it will be reported. So there is a format based on which uh, the activities will be reported. And Institute of Child Accountants of India issued in 1997 Counting Standard 3 on cash flow statements. So the format was uh, prescribed by them. And as per well, the standard, an organization uh, should prepare the cash flow statement. Okay, every firm, you know, uh, in case of sole trader and partnership firm, it is not made mandatory. Whereas, when it comes to joint stock company, uh, they have to prepare the cash flow statement in the prescribed format. It is mandatory. And the same should be presented for each accounting period. Firms may even prepare quarterly because they, they need to know about the, the cash position. Okay, whether the firm had to was uh, comfortable in making payments and there was some adequate uh, closing cash balance. See, so end of the day, doing business is to make profits as well as to 
generate cash unless you see there is a kind of a connectivity between these two the more you generate cash obviously your sales will be more but when it comes to accounting profit there both the credit sales as well as cash sales is considered whereas cash flow statement will give you better idea about the cash generating capacity of a business and ifrs the has converged the accounting standard and here it is called the ndas and uh, which requires more disclosures which we will be looking at later in cash flow statement so there is a legal uh, requirement or mandatory requirement for joint stock companies to prepare and uh, uh, report uh, the details of cash flow as prescribed by the ca institute as per well as, uh, as per the indian standard set so cash now let us move on to categories so we have already mentioned uh, we are going to classify it into three category that is operating activities operating activities investing activities and financing activities so first let us start with uh, what are all part of uh, investing act i mean operating act is here all revenues and expenses are normally on a accrual basis what you must always keep in mind is income statement is always called profit and loss account which always shows the revenue revenues in the form of uh, direct revenue is sales and uh, the interest income or dividend income all these uh, kind of revenue you know uh, will be considered and the expenses may be paid or payable will be considered outstanding will also be considered or paid in advance may be adjusted so on accrual basis accrual means non cash basis whereas income statement considers that's what we outstanding expenses and the prepaid expenses are considered in income statement and profit as per income statement do not coincide with cash receipts and there will be difference between cash profit or the closing balance of cash and cash actually uh, the movement of cash or the flow of cash on operating activities and other activities will not very much uh, clearly reflect in the income statement we will uh, tell you about different classification of profits profit may be at the production level as gross profit or account all as account all aspects and uh, maybe profit before tax or profit after tax all these kind of classifications you can get to know by looking at the income statement so for preparing income statement you no know, accrual basis will be followed which means outstanding expenses prepaid expenses outstanding expenses may be added with some of the expenses that means wages outstanding things that means expenses incurred but not paid so that will also be taken as expense prepaid expenses from out of insurance some amount is paid in advance will be reduced so the result of an income statement will not coincide with uh, normally the cash receipts and the cash balances cash balances so cash flow from operating activities include transactions and events considered for it is mainly to uh, in income statement it is for for the determination of net profit or loss so normally in the income statement all transactions are considered all events are considered for determination of profit or loss cash receipts from operating activities results from selling goods and providing services so cash receipts normally come from cash sales okay and cash received from customers suppose you give credit to your customer and take some 20% uh, now and remaining 80% as credit so the cash collected from the customers and cash sales will be part of cash receipts 
So this can be either cash sales, uh, cash received from direct cash sales or cash collected from debtors or customers. So it is maybe for selling goods or providing services. So cost of goods sold and operating expenses result in cash disbursements. So we need to know how much was the amount of purchases actually purchases based on which we need to know amount paid to suppliers, payment made to suppliers. So cost of goods sold is normally ever taken into account opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. Okay, so the purchases may not be directly given, it may be given in the income statement as a cost of goods sold. So purchases should be calculated taking into account the cost of goods sold. And based on purchases and the creditors, we need to find out how much was the payment made to suppliers or creditors. And in case of operating expenses also, we need to consider the prepaid or uh, outstanding expenses to arrive at the amount of cash exactly paid towards expenses, maybe in the form of uh, employee benefits or in the form of uh, you know, other expenses. So expenses as such claimed in the income statement not necessarily be actual payment of cash when there are outstandings and there are uh, certain type of receipts received in advance, certain type of payments made in advance. In all such circumstances, we need to calculate the exact disbursement towards uh, you know, the suppliers, towards employees, uh, towards uh, expenses, taking into account the outstandings and the prepaid expenses. So, sales is the principal revenue in an organization. So, operating activities not only uh, produce principal revenue, it takes into account operating activities considers sales. Sales is the principal revenue or primary source of revenue. It's the primary basic source of revenue. So, it considers cash flow from operating activities normally considers only principal revenue producing activities that means sales otherwise in simple term it means sales it is cash receipts from sale of goods or rendering services and cash receipts from royalties fees commission In case of a uh, person who has uh, you know, uh, let out his uh, uh, coal mine, coal mine for uh, on royalty basis, on uh, rental basis. So in that case, that is going to be his primary source of revenue. So sales not necessarily be the primary source for all different types of businesses. It can vary. For manufacturing organization, selling goods may be the primary source of revenue. For service rendering firms, organizations, the fees and the supposing there is somebody is doing consultancy business or some courier business is happening. In all these cases, you cannot have a sale of goods there for the services rendered by them. They will charge some amount. It may be in the form of commission, it may be in the form of fees. So all such things can, can become the primary source of revenue which will be part of operating activities. And against all these receipts, in case of uh, production based companies or manufacturing companies, sales is going to be the primary source of revenue and for others it can be uh, 
service rendering organizations, it can be royalties, fees, and commissions can be there when you use So, these revenues are to be matched with the, the costs or payments towards suppliers and payments made to the employees. So, when you want to manufacture, you need to procure raw material, you may have to spend money towards labor for converting them into finished goods. So, you may have to pay money to employees, you may have to bear the labor cost, material cost, everything will be there. So, the uh, revenue is matched with costs in the form of cash or in terms of cash here. Cash disbursements will be, cash receipts and the cash disbursements will be considered. So for an insurance enterprise, in case of an insurance enterprise, premiums can be their receipts, primary source of revenue can be there. premiums and their payments can be in the form of claims, you know, uh, policy benefits, settlement of claims, annuities. So, cash payments or refund from income taxes, refund of income taxes can also be can also involve uh, cash disbursements. So, payment of tax and as well as uh, any income tax refunds to increase your cash position. That should also be considered. But uh, these aspects ought to be identified with the financing and the investing activities. All, see, payment of income tax can be part of your operating activity. And as well as the income tax and refunds. But uh, it, it need to be clearly understood as to whether it is part of operating activities or part of investing or financing activities. Cash receipts and payments relating to future contracts, forward contracts, or option contracts can be primary source of uh, revenue. In case of uh, trading firms, in case of firms which are uh, um, predominantly uh, dealing with uh, these type of contracts. So what we must like understand, cash receipts not necessarily be always uh, from selling of goods, maybe for applicable for manufacturing firms, for different other firms or to different business activities, the receipts can be different. So we need to carefully understand whether it is part of operating, investing or financing for the preparation of cash flow statement. Then cash flows from investing activities. So for we look at the cash flows from operating activities, now we move on to investing activities. So cash flow, cash flow, uh, flow out, that can be cash outflow when you purchase or sell. Okay. So, cash flows from investing activities normally includes acquisition or purchase of long term asset or investments. And you may receive cash when some of the assets are disposed and some of the assets uh, which are uh, not part of cash and cash equivalents. Okay, some of the marketable securities are sold and you get some cash out of it. It can uh, result in cash inflow. So cash inflow and cash outflow on account of investing activities are to be identified and it should be separately be categorized. So normally it involves purchase of uh, and sale of long term productive assets like land, building, plant and machinery which are not held for uh, resale. Most right and Okay, so the plant and machinery and equipment or one time investment normally which will be used for uh, uh, you know, productive purposes over a period of time. It's lifetime maybe for 10 years or 8 years for which it may be uh, employed in an organization. So it may be sold once it becomes uh, you know, obsolete. And when the cash is received, 
that should also be taken as part of you know, cash received from sale of uh, old asset. It will be part of investing activities. Then let us now look at some of the examples of cash flow from investing activities. Cash payments to acquire fixed assets. Fixed assets include what we discussed here, all these buildings, land, building, land and machinery, even you know uh, your uh, capitalized or costs can also be part of fixed assets. That means this uh, you may be uh, putting up some equipment for R&D on a uh, long term basis. Similarly, cash resists from disposal of fixed assets including intangibles. And cash payments made to acquire shares, warrants, debt instruments to purchase. So whenever you want to go in for an investment, for investment in um, you are buying shares, warrants and debt instruments, cash outflow can happen, so it should be categorized as part of investing activity. Similarly, cash received from disposal of all these uh, instruments and debt instruments and other enterprises, of other enterprises should be part of. So it should not be mixed up with the uh, cash flow of operating activities or financing activities. This should be taken as part of investing activities. And a uh, few more examples, cash advances and loans made to third parties. So if, it, if this is other than uh, advances and loans made by uh, a bank or a financial enterprise. Okay, because uh, you know, advances and loans are their uh, primary business activity in case of a financial enterprise. For a non-financial enterprise, for a manufacturing firm, if any advances and loans are made to third parties, should be taken as part of investing activities for non-financial enterprise. Similarly, cash receives from repayment of advances. So when, when you give uh, loans and advances to your employees, to the staff, it may involve cash outflow. It should be taken as part of investing activities. Similarly, when you collect it back, when you receive it back, when it is repaid, it should also be. So this is not something applicable to financial enterprise. Okay? Other than advances that are recovered by a financial. Then similarly, cash receipts and payments relating to future contracts. Except when the contracts are held for trading purposes. If it is a trading firm whose primary business itself is uh, entering into these kind of contracts, then it is not applicable. For others, for a manufacturing firm which is going in for a future contract or contract, forward contracts, and any payments are made or any receipts are made in that case it can be part of your investing activities but this is not applicable to firms which are on to uh, trading uh, as their primary business so these are the, the examples and the instances of cash flow on account of investing activities and cash flows from Third category is financing activities, cash flows from financing activities. So it this involves you know, how much amount of money was uh, uh, you know, brought in, in business by the owner, owner's cap. And how much was borrowed from banks or financial institutions or by issue of debentures. In case of short letter concern, it is borrowings bank borrowings, it can be bank borrowings or borrowings from relatives or in case of a joint setup, it can be borrowings from banks, developed financial institutions as well as by issue of debentures or company deposits. So, financing activities indicates the size and the composition, how much amount was you know, contributed by the uh, owners of the firm and how much was brought in by uh, borrowings. So examples of cash flows from financing activities include cash process from issuing shares in case of a joint stock company, debentures, 
bonds. In case of sold rate of concern, cash proceeds from capital, cash introduced by additional capital introduced by the partners in case of a partnership firm and sold rate or in case of a sold rate firm. Whereas in case of a joint stock company, capital floated by issue of shares or debentures, bonds, and some sort of short loans from banks, short term borrowing. And cash may flow out when you redeem the debentures, when a, when a company redeems debentures or bonds, uh, cash may be uh, used to settle it, to retire the debt. And cash may be used to redeem preference shares. So a company may float capital by issue of preference shares, in that case it will become cash inflow. And generally preference shares are redeemable. So when preference shares are redeemed, cash settlement uh, uh, may be made. So in that case, cash outflow can happen. Similarly, payment of dividend as well as uh, interest on borrowings, as well as interest on borrowings, are part of you know financing activities. Now let us look at the format of cash flow statement. So normally. These are the three broad categories in which uh, cash, cash flows are to be uh, classified, grouped. Cash flows from operating, investing, and financing activities. And we have to consider the net increase on activities. So when your uh, receipts from sales is uh, receipts is from sales is greater than your uh, uh, costs or uh, your cash disbursements towards uh, employee benefits. Normally, in that case, you will have a positive balance of operating. Otherwise, if it is on the reverse, you will have cash or lost from operations. It will be negative if it is uh, negative. If it is otherwise, if costs are uh, uh, greater than your sales then it will be negative, then in that case it will be cash lost from operations. And similarly in case of investing activities, when you buy more, when you purchase more or when your cash flows are, are more towards acquisition of uh, uh, assets and investments, this can also become you know, uh, negative. This may become minus balance because your outflows are more than the inflows. So the inflow can be by disposal of some of your old assets or investments or um, uh, interest income on investments made in some of the other company shares or debentures. Uh, so if, if such uh, inflows are less than the outflow, in that case this can also be, be negative. When your acquisitions are, le are less than your uh, inflow, then in that case this can become positive. So the net increase or decrease, the net balance can become negative when your uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, net cash outflow from operating activities and investing activities are negative, your net cash balance can also be negative. And the opening cash and the cash equivalents will be added to find out the uh, closing cash and the uh, cash equivalents or uh, at the end closing or uh, cash and the cash equivalents at the end can be arrived as balance and you can understand uh, what was the reason for increase or increase or decrease in uh, cash and the cash equivalents at the end and which has contributed whether it is operating or uh, investing or financing uh, flow of cash, uh, whether, which of, which of uh, these three categories has contributed for increasing the closing balance or decreasing the closing balance of cash and the cash equivalents can be examined. That is the major advantage of uh, cash flow state. So information required for preparing cash flow state. What are data required? How we can prepare? Now the next step, 
after uh, having uh, understood the categories and the classifications, we need to know how to prepare cash flow statement and what are information or input that are required. So we need to have comparative balance sheet. Comparative in the sense, balance sheets are the beginning. Say for example, 1st April 2014 to 31st March 2015. So this becomes beginning and this becomes ending or closing. So you need to have data, balance sheet data of both opening as well as closing, beginning or ending. So comparative balance sheets are required. So the reason behind taking comparative balance sheet is to identify the changes that have taken place in assets and liabilities. Supposing there is some change in uh, land, for example, land, opening balance, opening balance is uh, like 5,000 and closing becomes 10,000. So we can, uh, by looking at the numbers, we can say that there is some sort of increase. Maybe cash that have been used to purchase land for rupees 5,000. So for preparing cash flow statement, we need to know the comparative balance sheets. Comparative balance sheets can indicate the changes that have happened in assets, liabilities and capital. Similarly, then we require statement of profit and loss or otherwise uh, income statement. Income statement. So this enables to determine the amount of cash provided, cash provided by and cash used in operating activities or in operations during the accounting period. After making adjustments of non-cash and non-current assets and liabilities. After making adjustments for non-cash and changes in the current assets can and liabilities can be considered. Okay, when there is increase in stock, there can be increase in your uh, receivables and there can be increase in your payables. So all these things will have impact on your cash position. Okay, the more you invest in stock comparing to the previous year and the current year, if your money uh, or if your investment on stock has increased, that means uh, your cash is uh, you know, blocked on investments, on uh, stocks, on materials. When debtors balance is increasing comparing to the base year and to the current year, that means you are giving more credit. That means your operating cash would have declined, would have locked up in uh, you know, giving of more credit to the customers. So we have to use the uh, profit whatever is calculated. After making adjustments for non-cash aspects and changes in current assets and current values. So this would be very much available in the balance sheet. And we need also additional data. Sometimes uh, uh, the purchases of assets or sale of assets, the profit at which uh, the sale was made or the loss incurred because of sale, uh, kind of uh, additional information may be required. So these are the three uh, information like uh, comparative balance sheets, income statement, and additional data are normally required to prepare cash flow statement. So ascertaining cash flow from operating activities. Now let us move on to how to calculate the cash flow from each segment that is from operating activities, investing activities and financing activities. First let us start with the Ascertaining of cash flow from operating activities. So we have to consider the main source of revenue and the expenditure in an enterprise. So the methods of reporting cash flow from operating activities can be classified into two categories that is, direct method and indirect. Commission or fees or royalties, or in the form of receipts, in the form of uh, 
commission or fees or royalty in case of other firms other than manufacturing entities. And in case of uh, you know, expenditure in an enterprise or cash payments towards various expenses. So cash payments. So sales, cash sales or cash from customers. So the reporting can happen either by direct method. Direct method is more on the cash aspects. The focus will be on cash aspects. The gross cash receipts and the gross cash payments are considered or disclosed in the direct method. Everything from the cash dimension. Non-cash will be, all non-cash items will be excluded. Whereas in case of indirect method, the net profit or loss taken from the income statement will be adjusted to exclude all those non-cash items that are already debited and all those non-operating incomes that are already credited or added or deducted as expense or added as income or to be adjusted. So in case of indirect. So the net profit or loss is to be adjusted for transactions of non-cash nature. So there are certain transactions that can be non-cash in nature also. So say for example, depreciation is a non-cash transaction. Why? Because there is no uh, movement of cash in the It's a book end. Depreciation is a usage cost of an asset. It is normally charged against the uh, sales. But it is non-cash in its nature. Because of depreciation, there will be no cash outflow. And the deferrals or accruals. Accruals can be on receipts and the payments. Earned but not received. Due but not paid. And due, now it is due for the year, but it has been deferred, not yet paid. Or some of the expenditure may be paid. An expired expenditure might have happened. Would have paid some 10 lakhs rupees towards advertisement for a bigger, you know, uh, putting up of advertisement expenditure. Would have blocked some 10 lakhs rupees or 15 lakhs rupees. Out of which uh, your current, current year usage may be only 1 lakh. So, such deferrals or accruals, incomes earned but not received and expenses incurred but not paid, all such aspects are to be adjusted. And items of incomes or expenses associated with. So, in case of operating activities, in, in, in income statement, normally dividend income, interest income will also be but dividend is dividend income is income from uh, your investment on shares in some other company. So that cannot be part of your operating activity. So had it been considered, we have to remove it. Similarly, interest income is on interest on debentures in which you made investment in other companies. That cannot be part of operating activities. If uh, income statement has already considered in interest income, interest income. In that case, these are all to be excluded as they are not part of operating activities. So that's why it's mentioned net profit or loss is duly adjusted for these three aspects. Number one, for transactions of non-cash nature. Number two, deferrals or accruals of past or future operating cash receipts. And items of incomes or expenses associated with investing or financing cash flows. So cash flows relating to investing and financing cannot be part of operating. So it should be added back or it should be adjusted along with the profit or loss as uh, shown in the income statement. So first let us uh, start with the direct method. Direct method. So the when we are going to uh, discuss in details uh, calculation of uh, cash from operating activities using direct method. So major heads of cash inflows and outflows here 
for operating activity is going to be cash received from trade receivables. If uh, predominantly goods are sold on credit, uh, no, the amount of cash received from the receivables need to be identified and cash paid towards employee benefits and other expenses are to be considered. So transactions that are recorded on accrual basis means non-cash basis. Non-cash basis. In profit loss form ought to be adjusted to convert into cash basis. So accrual basis ought to be converted to cash. So taking into account of outstanding expenses or prepaid expenses, opening and closing balance opening balance and closing balance. We need to know how much exactly the amount of cash paid towards expenses and we need to know how much amount of paid towards prepaid. So this is the format for you know, uh, calculating cash from operations or operating activities using direct method. So cash received from customers and receivables in a firm is doing 100% uh, cash sales. You can take directly cash received from customers or uh, cash received from cash sales entirely. But when you, when you have debtors balance or trade receivables balance in balance sheet in the opening and closing balance, that means uh, the firm had and made some <coughs> credit sales, made credit sales. So taking that into account, how much exactly was the cash received from customers need to be identified. And taking into account the opening and closing balance of creditors, <coughs> cash paid towards suppliers and advances, whatever given employee, maybe maybe employee benefits may be outstanding, maybe paid in advance. So taking into account these aspects, we need to uh, you know, calculate and exactly find out cash paid towards employee benefits and other expenses. And by adjusting all these uh, payments, that is payment towards suppliers, employees and expenses, the total should be adjusted against uh, cash received from customers to find out before adjusting income tax, cash from operating activities before tax. And based on the tax payables opening and closing balance and the current year tax provision, we can calculate the amount of tax actually paid for the year. So that should be adjusted against the sum of the balance is nothing but cash from operations before extraordinary items. So the extraordinary items may be uh, uh, maybe uh, may, may involve cash inflow or outflow, so that should be adjusted. And the final balance after adjusting extraordinary items, you will get net cash flow from operating activities. So this is the format with regard to uh, calculation of cash from operations. Let us now look at some of the equations or the formula for calculating cash received from customers or cash receipts from customers. So we have to consider the sales and uh, debtors balance or receivables or bills received balance at the beginning minus uh, end balance, receivables closing balance, you get the cash receipts from customers. This is one method. Otherwise, what you can do, you can take sales where, where the debtors opening and closing balance is given, we have to presume and the percentage of cash sales is not given in question, we have to presume the entire sales is credit sales. So in that case, the sales as given in the income statement to be considered and we have to add a decrease in trade receivables between the opening and closing 
balance of receivables and there is decrease it should be added with the current sales to find out the cash received from customers and in case of increasing trade receivables you have to subtract it it should be the, the difference should be reduced from cash I mean credit sales to find out the results from customers similarly in case of purchases so normally using the cost of goods sold is nothing but opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock so using that equation by taking it up on cost of goods sold it will be given in the question it will be there in the income statement cost of goods sold minus opening inventory plus closing inventory you will get purchases otherwise alternatively you can use this equation also cost of goods sold plus increase in stock between two periods opening and closing balance then in case of increase the increase should be added with the cost of goods sold and decrease in stock should be reduced from cost of goods sold to find out purchases similarly to find out payments made to suppliers the amount what we arrived as purchases earlier in the previous equation should be used here and the trade payables in the beginning and the trade payables at the end to be adjusted with the purchases to find out cash paid to suppliers this is one method alternatively what you can do you can take the purchases add a decrease in creditors between two periods opening and closing balance and there is decrease in creditors it can be it should be added with purchases and increase in creditors should be reduced from purchases and in case of cash expenses if expenses claimed in pnl account is on accrual basis that means taking into account the outstanding or prepaid <coughs> such expenses are called expenses on accrual basis so in that case to find out the exact cash disbursement towards expenses you need to consider expenses on accrual basis minus prepaid expenses in the beginning and outstanding expenses at the end so these two are to be so prepaid expense expenses prepaid in the beginning and out expenses outstanding at the end to be reduced from the expenses as claimed in the profit loss account and you have to add prepaid expenses in the end and outstanding expenses at the beginning so by doing which you can get the actual amount of cash disbursed towards uh, expenses and or otherwise see here when we in this uh, equation all expenses are to be considered it may be uh, employee benefits other expenses all expenses are to be added and the total to be adjusted like this if it is separately given how much amount of exactly paid towards employees can be separately calculated by taking into account wages and salaries and adding outstanding salaries and wages in the beginning and subtracting the closing outstanding so you can calculate the amount of payment made to employees or decrease in outstanding wages and salaries can be added with the wages and salaries or increase can be reduced from wages this way also alternatively you can follow any one of these two methods to find out payment made to employees then rent received if opening and closing balance of receivable is given it should be adjusted to know the exact amount of rent revenue okay the rent revenue what is claimed in the income statement maybe uh, uh, arrive maybe arrive taking into account the receivables that means earned but not received so to find out the exact amount of rent revenue in terms of cash you have to consider the rent receivable in the beginning to be adjusted with the rent receivable at the end and the difference should be added with rent revenue this is one method or alternatively what you can do consider the rent revenue whatever is claimed in the income statement and decrease in rent receivable or reduce increase in rent receivable you have to observe carefully by looking at the numbers in the balance sheet whether the rent receivable has decreased between the base year and the current year 
or the opening and the closing balance, whether there is a decrease in the rent receivable or increase in the rent receivable is to be identified and accordingly the treatment should be given. In case of decrease, it should be added with the rent revenue. In case of increase, it should be reduced from the rent revenue. Similarly, in case of interest paid, interest payable in the beginning and the interest payable at the end is to be adjusted with interest expenses. And decreasing interest payable to be added with the interest expenses as claimed in the profit loss. So the interest expenses, whatever given here is as claimed in the income statement, in the account. This would have been, see normally in final accounts, what do we do? Interest paid, we will show it in the payable account debit side. Who interest paid? In case any outstanding is there, we will add outstanding and we will take the load. So the outstanding will appear in the balance sheet. Outstanding will appear in the balance sheet like this side as outstanding interest. So similarly, the outstanding can be there for two periods, time periods. There may be some outstanding in the opening time period and there can be some outstanding in the closing time period. So that means in that case, we need to find out and figure out the exact amount of interest paid for the current year for uh, operating activities purposes, cash outflow for operating activities purposes. Similarly, in case of insurance premium, some part of premium would have been paid in advance for the next quarterly time period or half yearly time period. There may be some amount of money paid in advance, prepaid. So in case of prepaid, how do we do in uh, final accounts? In case of uh, profit loss account, in, from the insurance amount, supposing 1000 rupees is your insurance amount as per trial balance. And if we find that 200 rupees is paid in advance, we will reduce that prepaid insurance and we will show only 800 as current year expense in the payable debit side. And this uh, 200 rupees will be appearing in the balance sheet as, as asset in the prepaid expenses. As prepaid expenses, rupees 200 will be shown on the asset side. So, the closing balance of the previous year will become opening balance. So, when prepaid ex expenses were ex was existing in the opening as well as in the closing period and some amount is claimed as insurance premium in the payable account, we have to adjust it to find out exactly how much amount of cash was disbursed towards insurance premium for the current year. And for that, the treatment should be made like this. Insurance expenses plus insurance premium prepaid at the end to be added and at the beginning to be reduced. Or otherwise, alternatively, from the insurance expenses, add increase in the insurance paid, prepaid or less decrease in the insurance prepaid. Both the treatments are right. You can follow any one of these two methods. So, in this session, we looked at uh, the importance of cash flow statement and various aspects of or various cash transactions or cash flow and its categorization and the method of preparing or calculating cash from operations. So, in the classes to come, we will proceed further with the uh, numerical illustrations. Thank you.